Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on how to recreate the SLS rocket along with the Orion crew capsule, which is going to be put on top of the SLS and hopefully fly on some of the Artemis program missions out to the moon. Yes, uh, if you don't know, SLS is going to be the rocket that brings humans back to the moon in hopefully 2024, but um, probably not. Um, the first uh, flight of the SLS is scheduled to happen in November of 2021, so let's hope that uh, that happens so we are going to start by putting a mammoth engine on the bottom we're going to be starting at the bottom working our way up then we want to recolor a 3.75 meter tank orange and then we're going to want to click alt uh, hit w twice to flip it over so now we have two of them right now we're constructing that center core and hit alt click one more time to duplicate it and then flip it over one last time. Last piece for our center cores, we're gonna grab one of those smaller fuel tanks. Make sure we color them orange, auto strut rigid attach on, and that is going to be it. If you don't know how to enable auto strut and rigid attachment, you're gonna to wanna to go to settings. Um, you can do that in the, when you're at like the space center window overview, I don't know what you'd really call it. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and find advanced tweakables. That'll give you the option to turn it on. Next, we want to put on some decouplers so we can get our solid rocket booster. So we're going to grab the Clydesdale solid rocket booster, put them on the side of the SLS like so. And it is pretty important to put auto strut rigid attachment on for both the boosters and the decouplers or else the boosters will kind of just flop around and stuff. Now just going to use the offset tool to align the bottom of the SRBs to the bottom of the Mammoth engine, um, just for realism, right? Now we're going to get a nose cone to plop on top of the SRBs, and then we're going to get some Sepatrons to make sure they can separate cleanly from, from the core stage. While we're doing that, guys, I would like to quickly do some plugs. So, uh, if you're enjoying the video, enjoy the content, you know, there's a subscribe button, right? And also, if you feel free to join my Discord, we've been, Discord's been going crazy. Everything's been going crazy, like the channel, the subscribers, the views, the, it's crazy. You guys are all great. I guess you guys seem to like live streams. Um, yeah, and tutorials, these seem to be doing well, too. So, hopefully you're enjoying. If you were enjoying, you know, comment. I don't know what I do whatever you want I don't really but I mean I would kind of like but I don't know either way um, bad plugs aside we're gonna want to get a 3.75 meter fairing color it orange and then uh, you're gonna want to hit right click when you place down the fairing right after you place down the fairing rather so you're not gonna want to be building any of the fairing just get the normal fairing piece do the same thing with a 2.5 meter and this one you're gonna want to be coloring uh, white this will all make sense later um, we just need to build the um, the rest of the rock before we can get the the fairings worked out they're the they're the last step basically so now what we're going to be making is the sls's upper stage or which is known as the interim cryogenic propulsion stage i'll put a picture on screen of what that looks like right now and then we can go ahead and put down a decoupler we're going to get a cheetah engine from the making history dlc and yeah, making history is required for this uh for this build by the way um <laughs> now we're going to want to go ahead and grab ourselves some uh, fuel tank. So we're going to want to go find the 1.875 meter fuel tank and put that down like so. In real life, the um, uh, the uh, interim cryogenic propulsion stage of the SLS is powered by an RL-10, which is actually the Poodle engine um, in KSP. But I just went with the uh, Cheetah just for a real for uh, just to get this the scaling a little bit more accurate because uh, I feel the RL-10 uh, the Poodle is a little bit big. Um, so now what we want to do is we're going to want to put a 2.5 meter tank. I colored this one gray. You can color whatever you want, obviously. And then I uh, just raised it up just a little bit off of the um, off of that uh, bottom fuel tank there. And then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be grabbing some some uh, struts and we're going to just be making a little bit of some like some X's basically. So we're going to get into eight way symmetry. If you, easy way to increase your symmetry is to just hit X and that'll increase your symmetry if you uh, did not know. Then Alt click and here we are just finishing that up. And that once we have those placed, make sure all of them are placed and none of them kind of glitched out or anything. And that is going to be the interim cryogenic propulsion stage. So now we are going to be doing is putting one last fairing down, 2.5 meter fairing. Once again, don't. Uh, uh, just make sure you don't build this one and now you can put auto strut on those don't uh, rigid attach fairings uh, because that can cause issues with them uh, falling off so now I'm gonna get a um, <clears throat> um, mark one sized uh, decoupler put that down there and we're gonna get a terrier engine to put there so now we're going to be constructing uh, the Orion capsule. So for the Orion capsule, I am going to once again get some 1.875 meter fuel tanks. I'm going to do uh, one of the small versions and then we're going to do one of the medium sized fuel tanks. And you can obviously color these whatever you want. I just decided to leave them at the uh, at the default colors. So once we have put those down there, just we have the uh, we have a few more steps to do on this uh, service module before we can get to the actual capsule part. So we're going to put some 
Um, RCS engines on the bottom. I just decided to do six of these. Uh, these are on the real thing. Um, I'm not sure if they actually are monoprop there. You can just uh, read into it uh, if you want. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and put some of the new five nozzle um, RCS thrusters, which came with 1.11. These things are really cool. I'm going to get four way symmetry on the bottom and on the top of the service module. Now I'm going to want to get some solar panels and this is going to be four-way symmetry of those on the bottom and you want to make sure they're raised slightly up from the bottom just so they don't clip into the fairing and uh yeah when when we eventually do build the fairing you will you will see what i mean so just doing a test and that looks nice and good now we're gonna go ahead and get a 1.875 meter decoupler so not that one this one um <laughs> And we are going to first of all make sure that uh, that uh, RCS thruster thingy is not clipped into the decoupler because that can cause cracking attacks. It probably wouldn't in this case, but just just to stay safe, I lowered it down. Now when you get a heat shield, there are two ways you can do the heat shield. So I'm just going to be 2.5 meter heat shield. You can either do it like that where there's a little shroud, or you can lower it down without the shroud. I decided to lower it down just because I felt like that looked a little better. There there's advantages and disadvantages to both. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the capsule which is, uh, yeah, that's basically the main part of Orion, and then we're gonna get a docking port like so. The next step is going to be adding an escape tower or a launch escape tower, just so uh, the Kerbinauts can, or can abort if they want to. I'm gonna raise this up slightly off of the capsule. Uh, this is optional, but I just feel like this looks a little bit better once we get the fairings built. Um, what I uh, what you can do if you think this looks just absolutely horrible, but you still want to get the fairings to look kind of nice, you can get some struts, and you can um, you can just go ahead and do something like that. Now we are going to remember to put on our handy dandy parachute. You don't want to be forgetting that, and on our capsule with the Rocket Lab logo. But hey, that makes sense, or the Electron logo. Um, so now what we are going to be doing is the final step. So we are going to be constructing the fairing. So the first one we're going to start up with is this uppermost fairing. And all we want to do is just going to want to clear this out or just kind of connect the two. Clear? That doesn't make any sense. So next one is uh, what we're going to do is turn fairing expansion off so that doesn't cause any issues. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build this fairing. What we want to do is, is you want to probably hit C if you have snapping mode enabled. C is what toggles snapping mode. You can want to widen the fairing just a little bit and make sure you're going straight up with the fairing, straight past the um, the, the ICPS inner inner contract. Yeah, that. <laughs> and then um, all the way up to the capsule. Make sure it's going straight up. And this is uh, what is going to be the white fairing on the top of uh, of the rocket, like you can see in an SLS. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to completely cover up the capsule and cover up the little the weird launch escape being all not in the right place or kind of like. Um, I guess offset up and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna want to just uh, move the fairing up a little bit when it kind of like you'll see what I, you'll see what I mean here in a second and then we're gonna make the fairing go all the way up to where the those uh, launch nozzle thingies are and then we want to hit alt and then click to end the fairing this doesn't look perfect but I think it, it's the best kind of look you're gonna get with uh, that fairing for the SLS without kind of covering up those engines um, last fairing to do is this bottom fairing and what I'm going to do is just going to have I have snap mode enabled for this I do a little click there so it doesn't have issues and then I make it as long as it can go and then when you have the blue little things pop up you hit click and then it is done. So that basically is most of our rocket done. We just have some of the little uh, housekeeping stuff items to do, a little bit of uh, just stuff to get you know the staging and all that stuff set up. So we want to do you can do however you want the fairing the deployment to be. I just did four sides and then clamshell deploy on all of them, and yeah, so you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do clamshell deploy. You don't have to do that, but uh, it's a good idea to probably have a high ejection force um, because you kind of have to use those fairings as part of your staging setup, and it's good to get those fairings out of the way and is, you know, you, you don't want Kraken attacks, right? So now we're going to do a setup or action group. You want to go to the abort button or abort action group, and then you want to hit activate engine for that for the uh, launch tower. This is our abort, obviously, so if you want to enable the launch escape system, you're going to want to decouple it from the uh, service module and then you want to be deploying this fairing so it can actually get out of here not just get stuck in the fairing uh, if you don't know to activate the board action group you hit the backspace button so now for action group one which is going to be to decouple the um the escape tower once we uh, get uh, into orbit and stuff or not into orbit but when we don't need it so and i uh turned down the uh, thrust limiter on the abort thingy to uh, 50 so it's only firing at half thrust because those things have a ton of thrust and i, I prefer them to fire longer versus um you know, higher thrust. 
So, now what we are going to be doing is getting some launch clamps. These aren't necessary, these are mainly an aesthetics thing and they kind of sound cool when they deploy. So I decided to put them on because, hey, they're cool, right? So, just putting them on, you can obviously do whatever design you want. And then once we have those, the last thing, well, kind of the last thing, is going to be to set up the staging for our, for our rocket. Then we can take it on a little bit of a quick test flight. So, on the uh, bottom stage, um, what you will want to do is you'll want to get the SRBs and the launch uh, clamps to be firing at the same time. And then what I like to do is I like to put the, the main engine in uh, one stage below, um, just because I like, because you can, like, throttle it up, I guess, or simulate throttling it up, I guess, if that makes sense. And then what you want to do is you're going to want to get the SRB decouplers in the next stage and make sure you have all of the Sepatrons firing during this time or else uh, they'll be kind of useless, the Sepatrons, right, if you're not actually going to be firing them. So once you drag all of those Sepatrons uh, down, the next step is going to be to uh, set up the staging for to stage away the core and get the uh, inter 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 interim cryogenic propulsion stage. That is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, get that thing firing. So we're going to want to make sure we have the correct decoupler, which is that one. I'm just going to add a stage and put it down there. And then you're going to want to make sure we have the correct engine, and there is our correct engine. And then make sure you have the correct fairing. So that is a fairing. You uh, There is the big orange bottom fairing. You're also going to want to be uh, deploying that uh, main big white fairing there, but I think I forget to uh, deploy that uh, right now. I, I do uh, fix it in like just a, just a quick second here, but... Um, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm pulling it down. So next thing you're going to want to do is to decouple the Orion uh, service module and uh, capsule. Um, so just going to set up that staging. Make sure the fairings are deployed accordingly. And then you just can put that uh, um, the launch escape tower in the top stage. You're not actually going to be using it. Um, 1.11, new feature, is the cargo stuff. So um, I said, you know what, let's bring around some cargo. We have a little bit of cargo spots, so I'm mean, going to obviously put in whatever cargo you want. Uh, I put four of the um, four of the repair kits, and then I just put two of the EVA fuel thingies on, just in case you want to get some extra EVA fuel. Last thing to do before we can launch is we're going to hire some Kerbals. I just put the first three pilots I could get, and now it is time to head out to the launch pad. So here is our completed rocket. I think it looks pretty cool, pretty accurate. Uh, let me know if it's bad and terrible and horrible, but uh, I mean, hey, I don't know. Uh, maybe it is. I don't know. You guys seem to like the tutorials, so yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep doing them. So what we are going to be doing now is just doing a quick abort test um, just to demonstrate how the abort system works. So we're going to enable SAS, so we're going to hit the backspace button, and there it goes. The fairing deployed. The thing kind of spun out of a little bit, and then we're going to hit uh, space to get the fairing, and then hit action group wanted to get rid of the actual tower. Quickly jettison the heat shield, and uh, yeah, it looks like our carbonots are all all nice and safe here. And then we can, uh, we'll just crossfade over uh, right about now to the to the actual launch. So. We're going to want to enable SAS, probably. <laughs> yeah, a good idea. Enable the engine, throttle it up, and then we can enable the SRBs and the launch clamps off. And here we go. Um, one thing uh, to note about the SLS is when you have the SRBs firing, you get a lot of thrust to weight ratio. So what I like to do is I like to throttle down those main mammoth engine, or the main mammoth engine, uh, to about one third thrust through two kilometers to about 10 kilometers. Um, just so you're not like, you just to gain a little bit of efficiency, so you're not like just screaming through the atmosphere. So just doing a pretty normal gravity assist as we cross at just about 10 kilometers. I'm going to throttle those well, mammoths back on. And this is where the G-Force is kind of getting a little bit crazy as we uh, burn the last few hundred meters a second of those Clydesdales. A lot of Gs here, but uh, yeah, I mean, you got to get where you got to get where you're going. But um, now the Clydesdales are burned out, and there they go, staging away. And there's that weird, uh, there's a weird visual glitch. I don't know what that is. It goes away in a second. So uh, yeah, there it goes. So now it is just the core stage propelling us all the way up to orbit. Um, one thing to note about the SLS is it has way too much fuel in stock KSP. So you can either uh, just drain a bunch of the fuel uh, if you want, or you can just fly with full fuel. You can go like to, you can go very far with this thing. Um, the real uh, SLS, at least for the Artemis missions, when it, uh, it actually does not uh, orbit with its core stage. Um, what it does is it, it uh, sets the sap wraps with the core stage and then it uh, drops the core stage and then fires the, uh, in the uh, second stage um, to do its insertion burn. So there we go. We have now staged away the core stage, got rid of the um, launch tower, and now it is just the uh, second stage and the Orion capsule. As you can see, the core stage fly away now as we can go ahead and 
circularize ourselves. So we we had a lot of extra delta v in this scenario. Um, you could go, you could go very many places just because uh, for the tutorial's sake, I'm not going to go anywhere. Um, just gonna, this is a build tutorial. This isn't like a, you know a flying tutorial. So I'm just going to decouple the Orion module and just quickly deorbit it right away. Um, just so we can uh, demonstrate a landing with the module or with the uh, capsule. So we are we have the second stage uh, dropped, and now we can ditch the service module, and we can go from a very steep re-entry back into Kerbin. Now we're just coming um, over the mountain areas now, and we can go ahead and deploy the chute, and there we go. Uh, just jettisoning, jettisoning that heat shield, and that is going to be all nice and dandied up. Um, one last thing I want to do before this video, and first of all, this is a really steep place to land, but hey, it's where you end up, right? Um, one last thing I want to do before the end of the video is I actually notice some weird pink thing when I landed, so I'm, I want to EVA Kerbal and go check that out as I just completely knock my Kerbal and he's falling. I had to, like, deploy the chute or something. That's how I stop him. But either way, we're going to just, Kerbal's going to waddle his way, um, waddle his way up to this mysterious uh, location. I don't know, maybe it'll be a copy of Raid Shadow Legend. I was <laughs> getting... I don't know, those scrubs so I can get sponsors. Uh, I don't even, I don't know what I'm even doing. Either way, so yeah, here we go. He's going to take his nice long walk all the way up to those weird purpley things. And I don't know if you guys know about this, um, but as it turns out, hey, there's like crystally things on Kerbin. I did not know that on the mountains. That's, that's interesting. I didn't know that was a surface feature. That, that, that's cool. Um, um, yeah, there's your fun fact of the day. If you don't know that, I bet everyone knew that and I'm just stupid, but uh <laughs> Uh, either way, that is going to bring us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Um, we'll put some cards up for some more videos if you want to click on them, but that's going to be it for me. So I'd like to thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Please rate or comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.